There is no documentary filmmaker on YouTube more talented than Oki. Every time he uploads, it's just like this wonderful event. So big, even my cat can't help but jump up here and watch some of his content with me. I think Oki's Weird Stories is one of the best channels on YouTube, and he recently uploaded another banger covering a story that I'm sure most people aren't familiar with. So I'm going to show you some clips from that. I am also going to put a link to his YouTube channel and Patreon in the description below. Go support him, please. I think he makes amazing content, and he's just such a great guy. He's super nice. Every time we've talked, he's been nothing but wholesome, and he's got these incredible ideas for the future of his channel, and I just can't wait to see them unfold. So definitely go check out his channel, and if you're feeling inclined to help him reach his goals, then check out his Patreon. It's all below. Millionaire and computer what? hacker Daniel Beckwith had dug an elaborate network of tunnels underneath his Bethesda home because he believed North Korea was planning a nuclear what attack. What the fuck? Alfred's body was found after... Daniel Beckwith created a makeshift bunker and had another man help him dig tunnels underneath his Bethesda home. He kept Askia Akafra captive there, and in 2017, that home went up in flames. Jesus On September Christ, 10th, 2017, Askia Akafra died in an electrical fire while digging tunnels for a makeshift nuclear bunker underneath Daniel Beckwith's home. They struggled to navigate through Daniel Beckwith's home because of extreme amounts of debris and trash blocking the way. Before he succumbed That's, to carbon monoxide That sounds like a 4chan home. was only two steps away from almost certain safety, but the hoarding conditions of the home prevented him from making it out alive. The entire situation is unresolved. Askia Kafra. How is it unresolved? This sounds pretty cut and dry. The dude was one of those outrageously unhinged doomsday preppers, like probably a gang stalker as well, thinking the whole world's out to get him and everything's about to end. And he must have fucking snapped and ended up killing him. How the fuck could this be an unresolved case? I mean, I guess we're just at the beginning here, so this is all just like the intro, but to me, like off rip, this sounds like a pretty classic case of someone with one of those mental illnesses just losing control and ending up killing someone. At a young age, he displayed an aptitude. Oh, I want to read that. That is some Reddit shit right there. I am a genius, AMA. Just read what I wrote. Just read. Just read what I wrote. I came off as sort of cut off. I can get a bit Sheldony. I scored the ceiling IQ of 160 plus, standard deviation of 15. Usually, my IQ has usually been estimated in the seven 170s by my psychologist. Was this on like a Rick and Morty post or something? Jesus Christ. He was so cringe. What like, the fuck? He was like, oh, I'm, I'm just like, you know, these, these psycho, like smart, like serial killer type people. If I want to get into just the craziest thing he ever did, it, it was. Hold on, I don't want to read this. I mean, this is the kind of guy that would get made fun of on the board. Is this posted like. As satire by him? I I don't think so. If he's calling into a random phone show talking about this kind of shit. And I'm gonna use this air gun to like shoot this raccoon in a cage. And like, you know, this is crazy. Like, the, this is like legit psycho behavior. Like, um, one know, of the, the most psycho thing he ever did. Sure. One of the biggest indicators early on that someone's going to end up as some kind of serial killer is animal abuse, like the torturing of small animals and shit. That is a phenomenon that's been studied so many times and there is a direct correlation between hurting animals when you're young and taking that to people down the line. That is like one of the most cut and dry correlations ever. Like he wanted to, to come across as this crazy psycho. And yet for um, some reason it still gets like dismissed genius. pretty often by uh, law enforcement. You guys remember El, what was his name, Pushin Entertainment? I forgot how to say it now. He's the guy that would torture and kill cats on YouTube. He was a 15-year-old. That kid didn't go to jail. He got investigated. He's not in jail. And it's because they don't take it seriously. He's, oh, it's a kid, you know. It, it, it doesn't matter that he was torturing and killing the cats. He was a strange kid, and that's an understatement. But he had taken a video of himself taking a syringe and extracting synovial fluid from his oh, knee joint, what putting the it into a, like a shot glass or a small cup, and then drinking it. Yeah, this this is his computer and his work area. Yeah, what so the this is fuck? Basically, me standing in the that's worse than Chris Chan taking a shot he of his cum. all of this cum. Police officers then searched. Damn those room. penis emails Inside, though. They found a rifle, Worth it. The hood of a fire protection suit, several lockpicks, 
reverse engineered ID cards, and key loggers. They also found a list of social security numbers belonging to faculty members and students. It was the most filthy, <laughs> disgusting room I've ever seen in my life. I mean, there was stuff everywhere. Daniel was arrested and formally charged with five counts of property damage, two counts of computer fraud, tampering with documents, and illegally possessing a firearm. After that, Daniel took to Reddit to do an Ask Me Anything titled, I'm a 22-year-old oh who is going to plead guilty to a felony computer hacking charge in five days. When someone asked, what did you do? He responded with, I launched a huge, multifaceted attack against my university for nothing but lulls, involving just about every attack God, what a book. fucking loser. I made the university's IT department Ugh. look like damn fools. I mean, I guess pretty epic prank. Take that, university. Peak Redditor. I mean, this is some Reddit-ass shit. Daniel inherited $2.6 million after his mother's death. With that, he began to invest in Bitcoin, and he made a fortune. And in a now-deleted Reddit comment, shit. Daniel thanked the technology board on 4chan, G, for turning him onto Bitcoin as early as 2010. In a Reddit Ask Me Anything... I am still so fucking mad, and I can't believe this came up in... What was it? It must have been 2012, maybe... a. Yeah, probably 2012. I've mentioned this a million times and I mention it every time it gets brought up. There was a post on the front page of Reddit that said, I strongly urge you to get into Bitcoin. And then another one like Bitcoin has just hit $100. And I, as well as pretty much everyone I knew was like, that's stupid. That's fucking dumb. It's never going over 100. It's worthless. Why would we ever do that? And I didn't put anything into it. God damn. So this was one of... This seems about right, though. This seems like the kind of person that would actually put money into Bitcoin back then. You had to be out of your fucking mind to think it was a good idea. Jesus Christ. Just a random cringe lord loser doomer on Reddit was one person that just happened to put money into that fucking Bitcoin post. And it paid off. Since I actually got a call, and it was an IRS investigator, and they were asking me about uh, his Bitcoin account. They were basically saying that he was in, in possession of basically like oh, one point two billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Around the time of the call, the, the Bitcoin were like $55,000 of Bitcoin. And he had $1.2 billion worth of them, like, you know, somewhere in the blockchain. That was around the time I found out that he had, uh, you know, hired that kid and he died, you know, in that tunnel. What the at his house fuck? In on the site was a section dedicated to software developing and investing. One day, while watching the infamous farmer oh, Martin Shkreli live stream Christ. on the site, he first laid eyes on Daniel Beckwith. Daniel, who used the handle Three Alarm Lamp Scooter, impressed his Kia. Not only did he seem to be friends with Martin Shkreli, but he also claimed to be a multi-millionaire investor and hacker. I still remember the... I, I never saw any of those streams, but I remember Martin Shkreli for a brief period of time, had a whole Discord server that fucking worshipped him. Kai and I went in there one night because we were curious and just wanted to laugh at the clowns that were, for some reason, sucking the dick right off of Screlly's body. And Martin Screlly was sleeping on a voice call and they were freaking, about, freaking out about how lucky they were to hear him sleeping. It was so unbelievably fucking pathetic. God, that that whole community was awful. And the, when he did get arrested, I don't remember exactly what happened, but they were like, no, this is outrageous. What? He, what this, he didn't do anything wrong. What, what, he, what? Oh my God, this is, this is blasphemous. Fucking crying, losing their mind over it. It was a cult. Martin Shkreli's farmer bro, he's the guy that did like the 10,000% price, uh, price hike on... Um, Fuck, what was it? What drug was it? I don't remember now. Insul was it insulin? Yeah, 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 I think it was insulin. And I remember him saying that, you know, I thought it was kind of odd. Like, oh, interesting, this guy's a bunker. You know, what do you have a bunker for? And I remember him saying, you know, I've been doing this for a while. You know, it's just to keep myself protected and safe in case of a nuclear war or a nuclear disaster. With Daniel's Fucking funding, huge they red bought flag. brand new tailored suits wow. in preparation for their meeting with the Teal Fellowship Manager. All they had to do was make it to the meeting on time and make a great pitch. But unfortunately, that didn't end up happening. 
I don't remember how, but we somehow end up um, putting in the wrong address. But we end up going to the wrong location. At that point, we're just like, really, we're just freaking out. You know, we don't know what to do. And then we get to the meeting and we're about maybe 15 minutes late. Why a red flag? He isn't wrong. Is that bait? Hey, excuse me. Uh, I've got to go back down to my bunker for my canned food just in case of a nuclear war breaking out real quick. Are you serious? That has to be bait. That's like actual gang stalking behavior. There's nothing wrong with being prepared. I think there's a level to it. When you're building an underground network of tunnels and a bunker because you're afraid of a nuclear war going down at any minute, that is a mental illness. I literally. Oh my god. I can't tell what's bait and what's not. I don't think that's crazy. There's nothing wrong with being generally anxious about things. I have a flying phobia. It's irrational, and I recognize that. But it's a phobia, right? I think that's totally fine to be like, I have a fear of nuclear bombs going off at some point. But then it has to be this barrier, like this filter in your mind where it's like, that is a little irrational. Maybe I shouldn't build a fucking multi-million dollar bunker because I'm afraid of this disaster happening and maybe i shouldn't be wearing a bulletproof vest anytime i'm out in public it's not crazy at all do you go outside in a bulletproof vest every day might be multi-purpose bunkers also work work for general apocalypse scenarios what in the world is wrong with you what do you mean uh <laughs> There is a problem when your entire life is revolving around a fear. So much so that you're building a bunker to avoid the imaginary boogeyman of an apocalyptic scenario unfolding where you need this bunker to be the last human being on Earth with your canned food and prepping and wearing a bulletproof vest anytime you're out in public. That's not even a hot take. That's just, that is a problem. I get shit for being afraid of going on a plane, and rightfully so. I get that it's irrational. How in the fucking world can you possibly try and justify a man spending so much on this bunker and wearing his bulletproof vest out in public and then eventually hiring this man to dig out the underneath of his house for an underground network of tunnels because he's afraid of North Korea nuclear bombing his house? That is like schizophrenic behavior. That goes above gang stalking. He asked me to stop the car and he jumped out of the car and went by somebody. He came home afterwards, you know. But you see, you also, as a father, you have to be careful that you run off a child permanently. Many things I told him, he would rebut it and tell me Beckwith was competent to that. Beckwith was competent to that. It was like Beckwith was a superman. It was so. It's crazy what you can ignore you when you have that much respect you know. for someone. I remember definitely the first time around, I just started screaming to all the neighbors, you know, help, help, fire, fire. What were you thinking was going to happen to him at that point? I was hoping he'd either run out there or he'd go out the back window. This big window. Big here. window there or a window well. Well, this one's got bars. Ah, oh, well, that's not the window. Yeah, that one does have bars on it on the side. I don't think this he could get out here. there. That doesn't he have put bars, bars on his. Oh, yeah. well, of course um, he put bars big, on his windows. Yeah, He's got a, a fucking jumped out myself bunker and you know, tunnel system. And then there's that window well. Nuclear the war. Also, but he also could have got out of course there. he barred his windows. Well, preferably he would have just gone down into the tunnels and gone out the backyard. Why didn't he do the obvious? Come to my voice. I am on the safe side of the basement. There's not much smoke on my side. There was a door there. He indicated that he went yeah, to I mean, it was, I think this is time. absolutely so a murder. Why it possible I completely agree with the dad here. To come Daniel said that he tried to get inside the house to save Askia a total of four times, but that he was driven back by the overwhelming heat. During his attempts to enter the house, he said that he removed a propane tank, gas cans, and other combustibles. The way out, you told me originally that you took a couple of gas cans. Yeah, I don't but I never actually... found those. Well, one was supposed to be in the front yard, and the other was on okay, the side. Okay, so I didn't yeah. get that. So somebody might have walked off with it. Jeez. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm no expert here, but this looks like some absolutely fucking terrible acting that I'd see in like a bad Hulu original, like the Grim Cuddy. What? Someone must have walked off with one of the gas cans that I was put in the front yard. Jeez. He said that he I will say, and before we continue, 
people are asking, well, why would he kill him? Clearly, this guy is unhinged. I think that much is very obvious. He's very worried that everyone's out to get him. He wears the bulletproof vest when he's out in public. He duct tapes Askia's eyes, or, well, blindfolded him to get him to the tunnels. Bl uh, duct tapes his eyes so that way he's blind when he goes outside for fresh air because he's afraid Askia may turn on him at some point and tell people where his bunker is. So I think what may have happened is he got this fucked up idea that Askia was plotting to reveal his location or turn against him, and he killed him for it. That would be my guess. <sighs> How in the f They could have picked him up and taken him out. I was so close. Well. How could anyone watch this and think for even one second this wasn't a murder? That is not how anyone would respond to a situation like this. No, this is like worse than YouTuber apology level acting. I Naturally. think the screwed up part about it is even if... You know, we got what he want, what we wanted, like if he was put away for life, that would only be a semblance of what I feel like we could consider justice because it's not going to change the fact that Ski is gone. You know, Never does, dead. but it, we can't at the very him. least it gets this I mean, guy been denied out the rest of his life because of somebody else's name. No, he can't do it to anyone else. Because, I mean... A, a, According so far to the story, Askia wasn't the only person, right? He mentioned, was it, was it the Dick Rocket guy? Someone else had also worked on the tunnels. It wasn't just Askia that Beckwith had convinced to to lend aid to. And then there was also the construction worker that we didn't get to hear from, but it wasn't just Askia. The unfortunate name. Well, not an unfortunate name. Dick Rocket's a fucking hype name. Just unfortunate in the situation here because it's a super sad story. Daniel, I'm gonna put a measuring cup full of money out on the front porch so we got it on the way okay. out. Okay? Okay. This place is so creepy. Yeah. Because he, he was just a filthy hoarding lunatic. So, okay, there's, this is a misconception going on right now. He's not a billionaire. He had a billion worth of Bitcoin, but it doesn't seem like he ever cashed it out. So I believe, according Oki said, at the time of this, he had about 16 million in actual cash. But he had the billion worth of Bitcoin somewhere that he never cashed it out. So he's not actually a billionaire if he doesn't have access to it. And it looks like he never cashed it out. But yeah, multi-millionaire. Very, very wealthy. Two more stories you need to know about as we head into this week. A bizarre case will finally come to an end tomorrow. Daniel Beckwood is set to be sentenced. Now I want to let you know. That is great news. Part murder. The judge at the sentencing gave him nine years. One less than the minimum gave him nine years. Well, the, what the fuck is the point in having a minimum sentencing when it comes to a crime? What the fuck? The reason the minimum is there is that it's not supposed to go lower. How can you just be like, yeah, I'm just going to disregard that? I don't... Un what? How does that make any sense? I, I don't think he paid off the judge. It doesn't seem like he had access to his money. I That makes no fucking... It's a goddamn law. Like, sh like by giving less than the law dictated minimum, wouldn't that be breaking the law from her? What? Is, can that happen? What about my feelings? Don't I matter? You know, you are praising this gentleman who did a criminal act, who 12 jurors believe committed... Okay, how about this? Even if he didn't kill him on purpose, which I, I really do still feel he did, what the fuck does he offer society? He walks around in a bulletproof vest and hires people to work on an underground bunker in complete secrecy, blindfolding them, refusing to let them outside with their eyes open without giving them duct tape glasses, and just sits in his fucking hoarded, shit-stained, diaper-filled house. What is he offering to society? But he doesn't even offer money. He doesn't spend his money. Half of his money was in fucking measuring glasses. He doesn't even fucking spend it. That makes no sense. That actually makes no sense. 
He now I am starting to believe the conspiracy that he did somehow pay off someone somewhere. That makes no sense. No sense. Even if again you don't find him guilty of killing, uh, killing on purpose or what was he charged with? The depraved heart manslaughter. I'm, I'm getting charges mixed up. Even if you don't find him guilty of that, saying that he has a lot to offer society, so I'm not going to give him the minimum. But he, he, for the last fucking 20 years, has done nothing but live in a hoarder's house and build an underground network of tunnels because he's afraid of a nuclear fallout. Jesus Christ. But I'm starting to believe more in the briberies thing. Because, again, he had tons of money. He never spent any of his money. Maybe he dumped it all at once into this. Why was Daniel able to enter the basement several times during the fire and roam freely enough to remove gas canisters? That's a great fucking question. I also don't understand why Daniel told him to escape through windows, which mostly had steel bars on And that's them, what the father mentioned. Instead of directing Eskia safely to one of the doors that he testified he had used repeatedly. I don't know, it was probably, probably like years later that it really hit me that I'm not gonna see. What a great fucking point here. I actually didn't even think about this one. Because he did confirm he went down there multiple times. He even said he removed those gas canisters. And that's in that interview, he's like, oh, one of the gas canisters should be on the front lawn. He's like, it wasn't there. Oh, geez. I mean, maybe someone must have taken it. That is a great point. If his exit was blocked by so much hoarding debris, how the fuck could Daniel go move around in there, maneuver things, and take freely just take some shit out? And again, guiding him to a window instead of just saying, hey, come with me to the door that he is using repeatedly. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, he never made me feel like I was a, a loner, like an outcast. Like I said, his oldest home in a box. That box has been there for five years. It has not been touched. It's in the same position. We have a pit there, a kind of shrine for him with a large photo of him in his ROTC uniform and, you know, something saying love you to the moon and back. And there can be no closure. No, there never is in something like that, man. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. And as always, until next time. That's all you need to know now. Best documentary maker on YouTube, man. Oki kills it every time. If you're a fan cool. of documentaries, as... absolutely go support his Patreon. Absolute bangers. Nothing but. And he's a great guy. Man, that video made me mad, though. Not I mean, not because of Oki. The story made me mad. That That is very frustrating.